Hello, gorgeous. Today we are speaking about the dark feminine energy. And what is it really? Is it something to be afraid of? Is it something negative or bad? My name is Jessica Angelari. And if you know me and my work, I love to speak about all things related to the feminine, sensuality, sacred sexuality. And I love guiding women and holding spaces for them so they can start to tap into their own sovereignty and their power through their body, through their womb, through their yoni. And in that way, they can better serve their own relationships and their heart coming from this space of love. And today we are speaking about the dark feminine. And when we do the work of the feminine, it is so important for us to invite in the work of the dark feminine. We can't just work with the light qualities of the feminine when we desire to start tapping into the qualities, the life-giving qualities of the feminine who is cyclical. She is always changing. She is fluid. She is the chaos. She is creation. She is pain just as, as she is the love. And if we have desires and yearnings in our life, if we are on this path of connection and learning about intimacy and self-love, then as women, we have to come into this beautiful communion with the dark feminine energy. And it's something that I love to speak about and I love tapping into when women start working with me in my spaces is we dive right into the dark feminine energy, especially if you desire to cultivate your sensuality, if you desire to be more tapped into your sexuality and what that means, because this is exactly where we get to tune into our greatness, into our purpose and our gifts, our values, our virtues. All of this is birthed and created through the great void of nothingness, through the darkness. All of your dreams, all of your desires, your intentions they all begin in this place of the darkness. Think about the new moon, right? She, even the new moon teaches us about the darkness in order for us to move forward with our dreams and our intentions. Well, she also teaches us that we must invite in the darkness in order for newness and renewal to take place. So if you think about it, we also are birthed through the womb, through the wombs of our mothers. And that also is the darkness, the dark womb. This is where everything begins, through the chalice, through the dark void. So yes, we live in a world of duality, which means that we have to come into acceptance and this beautiful embrace of the light and the dark. This doesn't mean that light is better than the dark or the dark is better than the light. There is no good or bad. And I think we have to come into this acceptance of that as well. The darkness is magical. It's beautiful. It's unknown. It's mysterious. And to me, that is what symbolizes the feminine energy. And it's only uncomfortable because it's not something that we collectively are willing to do. We have so much conditioning around the dark side that the dark must mean evil. But if we desire to feel balanced or we desire to feel a sense of inner peace, we have to integrate the work of the light and dark qualities of the feminine. The light and dark aspects of the feminine work together to create wholeness. And this is how we as women can access our true power. So often the dark feminine is confused as well with the unhealthy feminine. There's a difference between them. So the dark feminine, when I say that, it's, it doesn't mean the wounded or unhealthy feminine. When I say unhealthy 
feminine though, I'm speaking about the traits of the feminine that are not conducive to its highest essence. And that can look like manipulation, defensiveness, acting from impulse or being a victim in your life. And usually if we are denying the dark aspects of our being, the parts of us that have been rejected and denied, the parts of us that have felt shamed or judged, and we learn that it is better to suppress these emotions or that we need to tiptoe around them and pretend we don't have these certain feelings, what happens is it starts to build up in our body. And it starts to manifest in ways that aren't serving our highest good, like staying in cycles that maybe are keeping us stuck in old repeated patterns. Maybe we stay feeling confused and disembodied. We feel overwhelmed. So your body, she loves you so much, as I always say, she starts to speak to you in ways and she communicates with you where you might need to start to work with the dark feminine energy. And this usually shows up in the womb space. There are some signs that can give you a clear indication that you need to start to work with your dark feminine energy. And some of those signs can show up as period pain, a lack of trust in your intuition, though life force energy, a disconnect or a dislike of being a woman, maybe also struggling to value your creativity. You might also feel like you're pushing through life constantly. And the thing is, until we really tune into the signals and sensations of our body, we won't, we will continue to feed into these dark feminine qualities until we actually wake up from this great sleep. So when we go further into the feminine mysteries, especially through the womb, whether you have a physical womb or not, this still applies to you as a woman, we can come to realize that the dark is not bad and the darkness is the source of mystery and we realize it is actually our responsibility as women to understand this darkness as women it's not good or bad and we also come into this great acceptance of our womanhood we realize that the darkness is innately present for the dark feminine energy is the unconscious side of the feminine which is just wanting to come out wanting to become conscious because then we can understand the mystery behind the feminine, behind the feeling, behind the sensation. As women, we can't ignore the darkness. We are always facing the dark energy, whether you want to or not. It's just our innate build we are facing her in our menstrual cycle. Half of our menstrual cycle is represented by the dark feminine. If you look at the luteal phase, as well as the menstrual phase, when we go into our bleeding, we especially are asked to really embrace and accept and come into this surrender of our dark feminine and really be with what is there. We are also asked to embrace the darkness in the winter. Mother Earth is also embracing her own cyclical nature. And we are nature after all. Mother Earth is our greatest teacher in honoring the darkness. And yet as a society or collectively, we are always trying to reject it but we are affected by the seasons. We are affected by the cycles of the moon. So each time we go into the beginning of cycles, like the new moon, we go, we are asked to go into the darkness. When we are bleeding, we are asked to go into this energy of hibernation and yeah, of darkness into the void. And knowing that this is just 
a beautiful innate way of being, I feel that this can also bring some a sense of relief because we can really honor that we are cyclical, which means that our emotions and sensations are also changing day to day, just like Mother Earth, just like her the moon cycles. So our dark feminine energy is very active. All the emotions are heightened in us in different times of our menstrual cycle, different times of the moon cycle. We might feel annoyed. We might feel emotional and sad and or grief or anger. And all of these emotions are beautiful. The thing is, we are told that they are negative or that we have to push them down or there's something wrong with us if we are feeling these different motions of feelings. We can't ignore this aspect of ourselves. And if we do, we are basically denying most of our essence, our feminine essence and our power because within this darkness, we can receive so much wisdom. We tap into this wild nature of ours, which is mysterious, which is untangled, which is beautiful and chaos and just like nature is, it's unpredictable, but we can learn to be with it. We can learn to really embrace it and hug it like a warm, yeah, a warm embrace. Because when you do, you will learn so much about yourself. The dark feminine is the promise of your power, as they say in Tantra. This is the power that we are usually afraid to see to see inside of us because we don't know what's going to come out of it. As I said, it's unknown. We don't know what will become of it. So there is a real fear around the unknown. We tend to want to control everything because that gives us a sense of safety to know what's going to happen next. And we might fear the dark feminine because when we do start to dive into this work, we might start to realize some things about ourselves. We might be called to make certain changes in our lifestyle or changes in our relationship or in our habits. So naturally, we want to resist that power until we break that habit. So the dark aspect of you, the dark feminine within you, she mirrors back to ourselves that the things that are not in alignment, which is why we are afraid of it, because we get to be mirrored by what is not in integrity. And if you have spent many years fighting the darkness, fighting the dark feminine, it can come back again and again in different forms. So yes, she will speak to you louder and louder if we don't respond to her. And she will speak to you through sensations, different heightened emotions like sadness, grief, like anger, shame. But also know that there is nothing wrong with you either. We just need to pay attention. We need to get still and, and slow down and develop this safety to go there and, real, and realize in order for us to really reclaim our feminine power and tap into our worth and feel sensual and feel beautiful, we have to notice what comes up also dur during that process of the becoming, of being. So you might have a desire to feel more sexual or sensual and then with that we might start to notice some shame or fear that arises in the process or maybe grief or sadness in where there was pain around that and maybe you've neglected yourself there and and this is an an opening for you to feel guilty or to feel bad about yourself but this is instead an opening an opportunity for you to come into a place of love for yourself. Also, your anger is a beautiful example of the expression of the dark feminine. And I say beautiful because it carries so many messages, just like with any emotion. Perhaps it might show you that your boundaries have been crossed. Perhaps you aren't being given the respect by someone else or by your, from yourself. 
So the difference here is, the question I should ask is, are you listening and responding to what shows up? These emotions begin to rise to the surface, and this is what we call the dark feminine, instead of repressing them, instead of pushing these emotions under the rug and just saying, okay, I'll get to that later, or right now I don't have time for this. So the invitation here is to not ignore the shame or to not ignore the anger or the continuous stories that are playing out. What if we shifted the perspective and came to embrace your these emotions? We came to really activate and work on your inner resources so then you are able to hold these emotions without staying there for so long and dwelling on them for so long and just seeing them for what they are acknowledging them and getting real about them this is how we actually stand in authenticity and then shine brighter in the light so in this way, we also stop trying to figure it all out or ignoring everything. And we use that energy, our life force energy, to befriend what is there, befriend what we may not be accepting, what we may be suppressing, because that is the easiest thing to do. So what if we stop trying to fight against something or trying to find and the reasons for everything? And instead, we just befriend the darkness. And we become used to that. We become used to that just as much as we do with the beautiful qualities of the feminine, like love and bliss and happiness and pleasure. So then when it does come up, we can easily just be aware and just say, okay, here it is again. How can I work with this? What is this trying to show me? Rather than trying to get rid of it and then feeling the pain every menstrual cycle, feeling the deep pain, the sharp pains during sex even, so we can start to work with the dark feminine. And in that way, you're also working with the feminine. You're working with your body and you're listening. You're listening to your own wisdom, your wisdom that's always, she's always speaking to you. She's wanting you to listen. So then you can continue to rise up forth. So rather than suppressing those sad feelings, what if we say, okay, I'm feeling this right now. And right now I can offer this some pleasure through my sacred touch, through my embrace, through my loving hold. And I can really listen to what is my body asking from me right now? What does she need from me in this moment? And believe me, when we do, there is so much sovereignty that is reclaimed here. It is our responsibility, sister, as women, that we learn how to commune with this dark feminine energy because it will always be present in our bodies. The difference is the more we work with it and we become aware of it, the less every emotion becomes a really big one as well. We can also discern which ones that, you know, which ones need to just fall away and maybe it is just there and just needs to come and rise to the surface and I can just feel it and it can just melt through my body. Maybe there are some other ones where I have to sit with it a little bit longer because it's trying to tell me something. This is an act of reclamation. We cannot ignore this wonderful power of ours. And I say that because we are the darkness as women and we carry that within us. Your womb is there to remind you of that. Your yoni is there to remind you of that. So just remember, women are highly sensitive. We are highly emotional beings. We can experience dark darkness and a wide, wide range of emotions in a very short amount of time. We can shift emotions from day to day. So there's a lot to try and figure out ourselves. Instead, if we just learn that this is just our nature and just love come into acceptance of this nature, just like the moon does, she gives herself some time to go into rest. 
before she shines bright again, well, we can really honor the feminine here. We can learn to become the solid resource to be able to expand and hold our pain and our chaos and the unknown and the mysteries and the wisdom that we carry. And at the same time, the bliss and the pleasures that we get to experience as well. Through my own initiation of the dark feminine, I actually came to realize more love, more power, more pleasure, more potential, more of my potential, because I was able to expand my capacity to hold the duality of my enoughness and the feelings of imperfection as well. And I learned to discern the emotions. I learned how to read my sensations and to commune with my body as the greatest vessel and messenger to what needs to be claimed in order to continue on this path of being in service to my highest self, the my grandest self. And then in that way, I, I'm able to better serve, be in service to my beloved in my relationship and to all the beautiful women that I am honored to work with who get to be, who come into my spaces. Imagine if all women were able to hold all of their darkness. I feel like we would then be, we would better support our daughters as well. That she can be all of her. We would also honor them and honor, help her honor her own cyclical nature as this beautiful gift that she's been given. Let me know what really landed with you here in this episode today. I will be back again to speak more about the dark feminine and how we can start to really connect with the dark feminine, where it shows up in our life. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. And if you loved this episode, make sure that you like it. If you are not already, make sure you subscribe so you can stay tuned for more of my beautiful episodes around pleasure, sensuality, and the feminine, and also relationships. If you haven't already signed up to my free seven-day program, Erotic Feminine Embodiment, it's filled with beautiful, delicious embodiment practices, somatic practices to start you um, yeah, on this journey of the feminine and embracing your wholeness just as you are. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Jessica Angelari. And as always, I'm sending all of my love and pleasure and passions to you. I will see you again next week. Gorgeous. Bye.